Hello and welcome to Collector's Lot in the Garden. All week my home has been this colourful garden in Long Melford. It's a beautiful place to be and a real tribute to its owner. Every corner is packed with traditional plants and foliage. We continue our theme today of looking at everything connected with the great outdoors. I'll be meeting a man who's made huge strides when it comes to collecting walking sticks and a lady with a blooming marvellous collection of fake flowers. Now, would you believe that the humble walking stick started life as a family that it's played a role as a fashionable walking aid? With 400 or so in his collection, John Bruff knows all there is to know about them. I didn't know that they were originally for defending yourself with. What comes into that kind of category? Well, this one possibly, Debbie. It's a Victoria, it's a, a First World War officer's trench stick. It's a good cane because it's a Malacca cane. Uh, just try that as a walking stick. Yeah, it's the right height, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Well, not necessarily, but I mean, that could be adjusted. But the point is that if you took it half there, you could give me an awful flap. Oh, yes, it. you could, couldn't you? It's yes. jolly heavy it's, on the top it's, there. It's a Malacca shank, and it's a woven copper threaded top. Hmm. What about walking sticks that became a sort of badge of authority, a symbol of one's status? <laughs> Well, that's one for argument's sake, is it a Liverpool sergeant's or inspector's stick. And what about tribal ones? Have you got any ones here from Africa? Yes, this is a few. That is uh, a present day one. It's one which my daughter brought home from Kenya three, four years ago. I think that's fascinating. Mm, mm. And this one here, this one must surely be ah. one of your longest, isn't it? Yes. This is uh, a master of otterhound stick, which he uses for for poking under the brown, under the edges of the stream. Uh, it always had a, a leather top on it, but I've never seen any of them with a leather top. That's, uh, that's a beautiful stick there. When did they become fashionable accessories? If you say uh, possibly the mid 1700s, that was when the age of the boulevardier, if you like, and there were all sorts of, as a fashion, uh, literally as a fashion accessories, they had long sticks, this type of thing, only longer than this. That would be a lady's fashion accessory. With the ivory top? Oh, yes, mm. yes, yes. There's a beautiful one with a silver top there. It looks as if it's got oh, an inscription on it. Well, this is one of my favourites. It was, my wife gave me this maybe uh, 10, 15 years ago, and I, I had a lot of research to do, and I found out on the top it says, presented to the Reverend James Scott as a token of esteem by a few of his friends, Alvar, June 1863. Um, and I then spent a lot of time finding out who the Reverend James Scott was. <laughs> and this piece here, uh, from the, although I can't remember what the name of the paper was, um, that says ex all about him. Uh, it actually uses a f the wording on the top of this. Mm. So that authenticates it yes, for you. Yes, yes. What about sticks that also have dual functions? Perhaps you've got a few with things hidden away <laughs> inside them that would be intriguing to yes, see. Yes, well, the Americans call, call them f system sticks, if you like. Um, this is one that was used Debbie for uh, by a forester. Now, that's the easiest way to oh. show it to you. Oh, well, what's that? It's for taking a test core out of a tree. But the point is that, um, that's an awful pun, sorry. The point is that <laughs> uh, if you stuck it into the tree and you didn't buy the tree, the tree usually died. Oh, right. So we'll do it a lot they of good, put yeah. it into a walking stick and um, he was able to carry it still. Is that a system to stick to, that blonde wood one there with the brass on it? Yes. Yes. This is a forester's stick. Oh. Isn't that clever? It's quite fascinating, yes. So how does that one work then? Yeah. Here we are. It's quite foolproof. There we are. Brilliant. Makes a saw. Isn't that clever? Do you only collect old sticks? No, not necessarily at all. Um, some of these here ba made by a very well-known maker, Steve Kime. This one in particular, 
This is one which I use when I'm shooting. Oh, that's, that's a gorgeous. Beauty, isn't it? Oh, it is. Marvelous. Beautiful. Well, I think they're all fantastic and all in their own individual way, too. None, no two the same. Thank you very much for bringing them into show. Pleasure, pleasure. Well, that's the lot from Collector's Lot for today. Tomorrow, keep your eyes peeled for a collector of pocket observer books. And I'll be meeting a lady called Iris, who collects what else but everything with an iris on it. See you then, 3.30. Until then, good afternoon and bye-bye. Channel 4 is producing a booklet to accompany this series. To order your copy, send a cheque for £3.95, payable to Channel 4 Television, to Collector's Lot in the Garden, PO Box 4000, Manchester M60 3LL. You can also call the Channel 4 order line on 0870 400 2230.